Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the third installation of the MMC's Changing Sceneries, Changing Roles uh, webinars. We're delighted uh, today to uh, continue our conversations looking at um, the transformation with AI, in particular with speech to text in regional languages, which we haven't touched upon. And then we'll get a nice overview in terms of where Ina has uh, brought their use of the tool sets for AI uh, into practice from 2015. So I am Elena Brody. I am the chair of the MMC and welcome to all everyone. I will now introduce you to our co-chair, which is uh, Jen Wilson, and she will introduce our panel. And uh, thanks for joining. Jen. Thanks, Elena. And thank you everyone for joining. I would say it's lovely to see you. But so far, I can only see the panelists myself. It is lovely to see our panelists, though. We're very happy to see you all. Um, this session will run for an hour and 30 minutes. And you'll hear from our three speakers. Each will take around 20 minutes or so. At the end of the presentations, you'll be able to ask questions. Um, if you do have questions for our speakers, could you please put them into the Q&A um, function, which is at the bottom of your screen? Um, that means that we'll be able to see them much more easily. The chat function is there. It's there for you to give us your observations, um, a little bit of chat. You can even say hello into the void and see if anyone else replies. Um, the webinars are being recorded and we will let you all know when they will be available in due course. So let's move on to our first speaker, who is Olivia Segura. He is a project manager for the National Audiovisual Institute of France, um, INA for short. And today he will take you through this huge project, which involves a number of automation tools, and it will give you some idea of what an AI enabled future holds for the archive community. So without further ado, bonjour Olivio, the floor bonjour. is yours. Hi everybody. Yeah, thank you for in the introduction. So yeah, I'm working at INA as a project manager and I especially work on AA-based tools and uh, tools deployment uh, in order to automate the data analysis. So my, um, my main idea today is to focus on what, uh, what role can play the audiovisual librarian in these changes and not, and not really on the technical side, which is very interesting too, but this is not uh, my, my purpose to, today. So I'm gonna share my screen. So is it okay for everybody? Do you see the, the, the share? Yes. Okay. Well, so to introduce uh, this presentation, uh, a brief overview about uh, ENA uh, history. So um, since its foundation in 1974, uh, the INA had uh, to deal with more and more audiovisual uh, heritages, content and careers. And uh, today, we reach uh, about more than 20 million hours of content available for available sorry, for our users and customers. And uh, in the same time, we gradually moved from analog to digital media. Uh, those 20 million are uh, just are uh, uh, taken from the, the public TV uh, archives and the French, National, French audiovisual legal deposit. This is not the the world data we, we have to manage, but the, the one uh, we can uh, have, uh, we have the, the more visibility and uh, which are the, the more precious for, for uh, our traditional uh, missions. Well, uh, since a few years, we are entering an era of data, of data and artificial intelligence. And this is quite a challenge that we are currently going through. So like just to, to introduce the, 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 main, the main project, uh, when we uh, started to uh, think to deploy some uh, AI-based tools, uh, we are first a challenge to face uh, that, were, uh, that, that was concerning uh, our information system. Because like mostly everyone else, we built our information system based on business needs and uh, liberian, traditional liberian practices. And so for decades, 
We set up and fed multitude of specific databases, mainly incompatible with each other. This worked quite for a while, quite well for a while, but we realized it didn't really suit the coming big data revolution. And because it's forbidding us to get full control over our data, even for to deploy automation systems. So this led us to completely, completely redesign a data governance strategy and information system for something, more, for something sorry, more suited to massive amount of data management and automation with more computing power and proper data models to maintain, maintain data consistency and reliability. So in 2014, we started a big, a huge project to completely overhaul this uh, system, uh, aiming to move from uh, a data, a data a user, sorry, a user-centric system toward a data-centric system. So we try, we try to start from the technical side. And then we can just adapt uh, depending on the, the, the needs and the use, the use cases. So we, we work on this, uh, of this information system uh, overall for, for now uh, since 2014. We are achieving this project and it gives us, it allows uh, us since three years to uh, make some new uh, tools to, to try to deploy some tools based on uh, artificial intelligence. The fact is uh, the technical issues were not the, the only and the main challenge, but we now have to challenge uh, social issues. Uh, this issues is that the, the, intelligence artific the artificial intelligence and machine learning based tools are very, uh, very technical with ask for a lot of uh, informatic knowledge and it's very new. So it's something that is very hard to uh, appropriate, something hard to use if you never uh, have a try with. And so when we started to, to think uh, about what we can do with AI's tools, uh, the first uh, problem that was there were a gap between the, the engineers in our company and the librarians, the, the people who knew uh, what was the, the needs, what was the, the use case we, we, want, we, we wanted to, to, to do. So uh, this gap between those two, uh, two contributors were something that just uh, blocked the, the, the work and just make us unable to, to find some uh, so find some ideas to, to start to, to experiment, experiment and so on. So for maybe one year or more, uh, we never, uh, we don't have some results. And finally, we, we just uh, think that the best solution to fill the gap was to have some go-between uh, profiles, some people who are not very specialized in any of the uh, specialty. We, some people like, there are not some librarians, but there are not some engineers too. And that's something in between. And the idea is just to make the link between uh, librarians and engineer because they both are specialized in things that we just cannot afford to, to not uh, count with it, but they cannot make the link themselves. So. Uh, they, uh, the, the inner just try uh, start to to work with people like me. I'm not an informatician. I'm not really librarian. I'm more librarian than informatician, but I just know enough to make the link. And it was something that just helped us to start and to have a, a real uh, work uh, and functional work teams. So this is a cross functional teams. It means that. I'm working with both sides. The both sides are not working together. Sometimes it can happen, but most of the time they just don't see each other. But I'm working with both and I try and I make the link between I work uh, with the, the, the business uh, trying to uh, define what we want to have and uh, working on our data or contents. 
and in the other ends, I'm go uh, make the link with the engineers and we just uh, look uh, together for IT uh, solutions to deploy it to answer the, the, the previously uh, uh, the previously said needs. So uh, this organization help us to uh, to start and to have uh, some first results. And with this uh, organization, we try to have something that a uh, system that were not uh, to say not rigid like something we can easily modify and easily uh, use if we have to change something. So the idea uh, we try to set up was to have a toolbox. It means something like you can just have some uh, some tools you can just use uh, in a, in a, in a specific purpose, but you can also cross uh, mix the, the, the tools and make some workflows combining the different tools you want to uh, analyze your, your contents, your media. So depending on the use case, we can just set a workflow up in a very, in a very uh, short time. And the, the workflow rely more or less always on the same uh, logical. This is something that in the first step, you have to collect some new data, the candidate, uh, data you want to analyze this, and then you will process the this coming this new uh, data, this candidate data, uh, with the the, the tools uh, you just you choose for your workflow. It will uh, give you some output, some results, and the final step, and this is where uh, the the librarians uh, are very are very uh, important because this is their job. Uh, we make some uh, links between the results uh, we, we just get, uh, get from the, the analysis with some data references and we try to have some match. And if we have some match between the references and the results, so uh, we can identify, we can detect some contents. So this, uh, this uh, methodology of, of working just have two main aspects, the technical aspect and the, the data, the, the references aspect. And this is uh, this stands for the engineer in one side and the, for the librarian in the other, the other side. So here is a, a result of what we aim. This, is, uh, this uh, demo is based on real uh, results we calculated, but uh, the, uh, the interface, the interface, the, uh, HIM is not uh, the, the final one, uh, the, the one we have actually, this is the one we want to, to develop. So it's a kind of a prototype. But in the, final, uh, in the final step, we want to have something like this. So this, uh, this here, uh, this user interface, just have some a player, some things like uh, some data, that come from the segmentation, like when we just detect and uh, separate the different contents on the, the, the main contents we are analyzing. analyzing. And on the, the, in the right uh, side, we have some meta, meta data uh, coming from the contents. So I, I'm not, uh, not going to detail everything, but uh, the, 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 the main idea to, to keep in mind is that we have Two, uh, two main uh, two main work. The first is to uh, is a segmentation of our data of our contents, and once we did this, we can uh, try to to have an automatic extraction of on the contents in the contents. So this is two separate separate steps, and we uh, there are there's, there is a hierarchical hierarchical uh, link between. We first have to, to do the segmentation before to do the, the indexing. So first step is the segmentation. Uh, this is something we have to do because our media are not uh, something like homogeneous. I mean, if we have a file or a tape, this is not, I mean, it can be, but sometimes it happens that in this in one file, we have different contents. And maybe this is not some linked content. This is some very uh, heterogeneous contents. And so the first step is just to board to the border to to say 
to segment the content and be able to say this is the beginning of one content and this end, and then this is the beginning of other content and the end of another content. So what was the first step? Because if you want to index the, the contents, we need to uh, to have all this information all this information in the right box. So we have to just make this box uh, with a segment, automatic segmentation. And it asks for uh, a knowledge about the, the contents. And so it's here that we just concentrate the librarian's knowledge about our media because an engineer cannot do this because, you know, like it's, it's something like the algorithm, ag the algorithm and the tools are something very important to have to, to, to get uh, to, to have some uh, powerful tools, yes. But you know, there's an expression like garbage in, garbage out. If you train your, your uh, system with some data that are not proper for what you want to do, uh, the results won't be proper too, and, and you won't have something that you can cannot really use at the end. So uh, our librarians uh, and I work for uh, identify, for analyze, the, the contents and try to find a better way to uh, give it uh, to analyze by a machine. So we just try to uh, find the, the best criteria like uh, visual or audio or audio uh, audio features, and uh, we will train some uh, some tools. We especially we mainly uh, work with uh, supervised uh, machine learning tools. And we will gonna uh, we will segment with, uh, our content. So here, uh, this is an example for uh, TV news, and the uh, workflow we just set up is to uh, use the image classification, which can uh, help us to say this is something like a TV set, this is a report. And once we get we we, we did this, we can uh, apply some speech to text in Anchorman's images and report images, and we try to see if there's a link between, if they're related by the topic, and if we have a match, uh, a semantic match, so we can just link and say, this report is uh, go with the, the, the uh, TV set, the Anchorman uh, contents, so together they make a topic, a TV news topic. So we try to uh, apply this on your contents, and it was quite satisfying and uh, now we are just trying to to get the thing a little better but we can now uh, think about how to extract uh, information features in uh, in our media just to have uh, something like automated uh, indexing process so i'm gonna give you uh, some small exam examples of what we want to do and what we are uh, experimenting now. And so the first thing is, uh, what the question is what we, we see in the screen, in the image. So we use some uh, object recognition uh, tools that help us to, uh, to find some conceptual uh, object in the image. Like here we can see the soldiers and we can see a rifle. Uh, and, and things related to uh, military and uh, the, the machine, we just uh, give uh, this information in a small interface. So uh, it's something that can help to describe the contents by the images. Then uh, we can uh, ask what, who do you see, who we see. So we can use the facial recognition and we can uh, link this with some OCR, so optical character recognition, to try to identify the people we just uh, are in the, the reports or the, the TV news, uh, trying to get the face and the name with the OCR. Then we can uh, try to, to get some uh, further information with still the, the optical, optical character recognition, like things about credits, about the time place or the state of the images, if it's uh, an archives or not when uh, it screens uh, on the images. And uh, when you reach this step, you have some basic information uh, you, you get from the images. Then you can uh, try to work with the sound and we have uh, something like is, uh, is a kind of 
uh, music play, uh, sound classifi classification, sorry, uh, which help us to uh, to disting distinguish uh, the voice of people and the music, and it can it can uh, help us to work on uh, musical uh, contents, but uh, also for another a lot of purpose. It can be. Uh, to detect jingle uh, or opening ties with the, the, the specific jingles. Uh, then we want to know who is talking and we can uh, use things like transcription, which uh, include the diarizationization uh system, which uh, can uh, just separate the, the, the people, the speakers, and uh, we have a speaker one, speaker two, and we can just uh, have a, an idea of who is speaking, if, if it's an interview or something like this. Uh, we can also, once we, we distinguish, we identify if it's a, a voice from a human voice or, or something from music. If we uh, identify a voice, we can try to identify if it's a woman voice of the voice of a man. So we still use some uh, classic sound classification tools, but not the one uh, just to uh, find to do this work and we separate uh, women and men just to have some you know, social studies and uh, things like that. And finally, once we get all of this, we can just uh, take the, the speak to text, speaks to text, text sorry, uh, data just to make some new uh, work uh, with it. And we can, by example, make some text classification, which can uh, make some uh, topics automatically, uh, automatically uh, made some topics describing, describing our content. So here is something about uh, politics and about, uh, about Corsica, and it will give uh, automatically, so, automatic, particularly some uh, words related to the contents, which, uh, which can help uh, to make some, uh, some work uh, gathering some uh, associated contents and things like that. So once we reach this point, uh, we have something that is not maybe perfect, but what can help in many points to, uh, to answer the, the massive amounts uh, of data we have to, to deal with. And uh, it gave a new role with specific uh, skills to our librarians. And what we uh, notice it is that, that, is that the, um, the, a, the artificial intelligence doesn't seem in our company, doesn't seem to uh, replace people, but it replaces some data for other data. And the, the real work the new work is how we made this data. And before we didn't have to make work before uh, working on the data, now we have to work before to make some models that can help us to, uh, to analyze the data. So it's something like a kind of cycle of work and you have to, to master the, the generation of data and then the correction of data. The, the, the quality control. So we can see some few uh, new skills and a new uh, uh, role that, that can just uh, emerge from the, the, those experimenta experimentation. So something that's related to uh, a job we can call, we like to call uh, AI stewardship because you have to, to manage uh, all the, 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 all the data that are related to uh, AI based tools. And this, there are too many uh, sides. The first is to maintain the models and workflows. And it is something that uh, is, is the role for the or librarian because if you don't know uh, the, the data, if you don't know the use case, you are not very uh, useful. And uh, so you have to turn a system, the reference and databases that comes along. The other, uh, other aspect is uh, the program knowledge is, and uh, now you more and more, you don't have to uh, manually, manually uh, complete the data you don't have, but we will gonna do more and more control, uh, quality control uh, of the data produced. And if it's not satisfying, we will we'll train the, the models again until we have something that is not uh, too hard to uh, manually complete. 
So uh, this is something that's more and more, uh, more and more important of the process we were just setting up. And uh, finally, something that's not a big change. I mean, it, it is more or less the same as before. Uh, we still have to uh, make some documentary researches uh, in order to maintain the models because, you know, this is some provisional work. So we, we make something which, which says, I think this day we, we, uh, this uh, thing will be broadcast. And so we have to maintain this and you have to keep the, the, the news of the, the, the TV channels uh, to know what they are going to broadcast. To end this presentation, uh, just some few advices, and maybe uh, I'm not gonna uh, tell about all, but maybe one of the, the most important is the first is to centralize the system and database if, if you can, because uh, it will be quite easier to make some uh, AA based tools project. And the uh, another one very important, I think, is to really involve the final users and to think uh, with use case and not with uh, tools, because at the beginning, we started uh, to think, we, we, I mean, the, the tools and the technique what was what uh, draw, drove uh, our work. And finally, we just realized that it was better if the, the work was drived, was drove sorry, by the, the use case and the, the library and knowledge and needs. So thank you. Uh, it's all for, for this presentation. Thank you, Olivia. That was so interesting and you've given us so much to think about. I am, I'm sure many of us have a lot of questions for you at the end. <laughs> I know I certainly do. <laughs>